to host our, uh, what I think will be the, we, we've had Herb Fraser in here and Bernie Powers, and we've had, um, do you know Reverend Thule Beresford, who's the uh, Lutheran minister right here on Rutledge? She's, you should know her if you haven't sure met her. I'm She's sure. a South African born Lutheran minister and uh, really dynamic, but she was working as a chaplain at the hospital the night of the massacre. So she had to, you know, among other things, she's been, um, well, she's been charged with the Lutheran Church for developing some kind of race relations component to their work, you know, as a response to um, Emmanuel. But she was also working as the chaplain and, you know, uh, worked real closely with the families. Um, so we've had, a, who, who am I forgetting? We've had one or two other guest speakers come in and, um, provide their reflections on how the community has responded. So Senator Kipson, you're our, our final speaker for the semester. And um, uh, you know, just by way of introduction, uh, Senator Kipson's been in the, the South Carolina legislature for th about three years. Um, he recently won re-election to the seat. And I think I mentioned this in, in my email. And uh, you know, I, I think just in terms of, um, well, he's, he's connected to, you know, both the, the killing of Walter Scott and the Emanuel Massacre on a number of different um, levels, you know, both personally, but then also um, uh, politically and as a, a community leader. So I'm hoping he'll share some reflections on, you know, on uh, all of those connections. But as I mentioned in my email, I, I, I don't think any, um, any community leader or you know certainly anyone in the legislature has done more to try to honor Senator Pinckney's memory than by um, you know realizing Senator Pinckney's legislative agenda and he's done that through his advocacy for gun reform uh, you know closing the so-called Charleston loophole um, he's been an advocate for a higher minimum wage he's um, lobbied for uh, Medicaid expansion for the state of South Carolina and also played a key role in the removal of the Confederate flag from the State House um, which you know is um, at least to my thinking um, you know I, I don't think there's been a, um, a better way to, to honor Senator Pinckney than by you know, fighting for his legislative agenda. And I think Senator Kimson, even though he's in the minority party, even though he's a, a relative newcomer to the legislature, he's had uh, an incredible impact and um, been able, um, you know, d despite the um, unpopularity of, of many of his public positions, of his political positions, he's um, shown some real um, ability at, uh, you know, gaining some friends on the other cross, uh, the other side of the aisle, and and making things happen in a, 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 a kind of political conversation or a political context that doesn't give you a whole lot of room to work in South Carolina. Um, so, um, for all those reasons, I'm uh, honored to have uh, Senator Kimson, uh, our neighbor, uh, here here speaking to the group. So, with that, uh, welcome. Thank you. It's. Uh it is really a, a great honor to be with this class. Uh, I was just thinking, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how many professors saw my opinion when they were putting together uh, when your final projects were due. Or, uh, uh, but uh, you got a real jewel here uh, because normally that, that schedule is pretty uh, set forth by the professor. So the fact that y'all have input uh, speaks volumes for this class. So um, I am uh, from Columbia, South Carolina. Moved to Charleston in 2000. Uh, I'm a partner at Motley Rice Law Firm where I uh, handle um, class action litigation, mass tort litigation. And I also do personal injury cases. In fact, I filed my first rep case uh, um, last week. Actually, I hadn't filed it. I signed it. Uh, I don't generally uh, handle automobile defects, but this was a high school friend of mine um, whose daughter was significantly injured in Columbia. So 
my law firm, Motley Rice, we don't work for any corporations. We work for individuals who've been wronged, in our view, uh, by corporations. We work on a contingency fee basis, meaning that uh, you don't pay anything out of your pocket uh, until we win. Um, and that is important because oftentimes corporations um, they have enormous resources. And so um, the little man uh, who has a case against a company uh, comes to plaintiff lawyers to vindicate their rights and we take a portion of the settlement proceeds um, so the victim doesn't have to come out of pocket with anything. So that's how you fight um, civilly I'll touch on later uh, when we talk about um, uh, Walter Scott Jr. and also um, the murder of nine at Mother Emanuel. So I was not in the Senate long um, and really <coughs> did not know Senator Picknick that well prior to the shooting. Um, he and I, we were acquaintances. Um, but didn't often chat regularly before I was elected to the Senate. When I was elected to the Senate, we were members of the Democratic Caucus and we often sat next to one another um, during our meetings. We have uh, weekly meetings, all the Democrats, there are only a few of us, uh, 18. This state is dominated uh, by the Republicans and has been for, for decades. Uh, for at least one decade and, and plus uh, four years. And so, um, you know, people say, well, we want something different. Well, we hadn't voted for anything different. We've been doing the same thing for at least a decade. And so all this anger uh, that was demonstrated at the polls, I can't, it, it perplexes me because the direction of the country is for Republican control. Republicans control the Washington, D.C., uh, even though you have a president, you know about politics and the way government works. Presidents don't pass bills. It's Congress and the state legislature. The governor doesn't pass bills. It is the House and the Senate, and those are largely dominated and have been dominated for years by Republicans. So it's not a friendly place in the state house for Democrats. Senator Pinckney would always advocate for the working class. And what I mean by working class people, um, anybody who makes um, less than fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. Um, I know that sounds like a lot, um, but really is a part of the working class, um, in my view, and. If you look at South Carolinas and South Carolinians and the demographics, not many people make that. In fact, we one out of every three jobs in South Carolina is considered low wage. We got a lot of companies coming to South Carolina, but the reason why they come is because they don't have to pay. I mean, I like the beach and everything, but they're not moving here because of the beach. They're moving here because we they don't have to pay. South Carolinians as much in this state as they do in other states. So Senator Pinckney was an advocate for um, fighting for the working class. Uh, he would have proposals to expand Medicaid, proposals to raise the minimum wage, um, etc. Um, I saw him the day he was murdered. We were just um, finishing up a Senate Democratic Caucus meeting. And uh, I had not seen him in some time. He had the unique responsibility of pastoring a church. I don't know if we've got any AMEs in the house, uh, but the AME church is demanding, uh, and as well as the Baptist church, just any preacher. 
Uh, there are a lot of demands on your time, and his parishioners wanted to see him in the hospital, wanted to see him at the uh, church service, and church Bible study. And so on this day, we had um, we were debating the budget. We got a seven billion dollar budget in South Carolina, and I knew that he sat on finance, so it's important for finance people to be in the General Assembly when we de debate the budget. Um, but he told me, and I, I remember this vividly, he said, I cannot be in session today because I must return home. We have a very important church meeting. And what he was referring to was the fact that his church, Emmanuel, was going to be the church that had been chosen as the church to have the annual church conference. And in the AME church, that's a big deal. I mean, they bring buses in. Uh, it's 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 uh, at least uh, close to approaching a thousand people. So it's a big deal for for the church to be chosen for the church conference. So they had a meeting. Uh, Reverend uh, Presiding Elder uh, Norvell Golf was there. And you've seen him sort of take the lead in the aftermath uh, of the shooting. And they were meeting. After the meeting successfully concluded many of the hierarchy of the AME church left the church but he knew that this was a Bible study time and so he went downstairs to, um, to, to, to worship and pray with the parishioners. Uh, you've read the story what happened after that I think one thing you may not know and, I, and this is good authority communicated to me, but I have not personally verified this. Um, but that night, uh, Ruth uh, loaded multiple bullets into the parishioners. It just wasn't one or two. Uh, my understanding that some people were filled with bullet holes. So not only were they shot, they were mutilated. And the kind of uh, person that Senator Pinckney was, is I can see him right now. I don't know that this happened, but me knowing him, uh, I can see what happened. The young man comes, he's a stranger, 